Hi guys, Rain here and today I want to talk about Electro Traveler. I have invested quite a lot on my Electro Traveler, bringing her talents to level 11 and even maxing out her constellations to as high as patch 2.0 allows me to. I have also tested multiple builds and I'm not going to lie, I expected more from her. The format of today's video will be slightly different. I will tell you the problems I have with this character in the first half of the video. In the second half, I will tell you which teams does this issue not apply and who Electro MC can work well with, basically her best team comps. The number one issue I have with Electro MC is, she gives energy, not energy particles. You may ask what's the difference? When most characters use an elemental skill, it generates multiple energy particles. These can be seen from the flying particles in the sky. When you collect the energy particles, the entire team gets the energy. But for Electro MC, her elemental skill only generates one electro particle and three energy amulets. Each amulet restores 3.5 energy, making three amulets restoring a total of 10.5 energy. However, this energy is not shared among the team. Only the character who picks up the amulets gets the energy. Here you can see both Zhongli and Kazuha started with zero energy. However, once Zhongli picks up the amulets, Kazuha gains nothing. Even Electro Traveler herself gains nothing. This makes your sub DPS and support suffer because they are unable to gain energy passively. The same issue applies to Electro MC's Elemental Burst. It generates one energy per hit. However, this does not apply to the entire team. You might say, well, Elemental Burst aren't meant to generate energy in the first place and you may be right. But there's also an Electro character in the game whose Elemental Burst can also generate energy. But not just energy, energy particles. May I present to you our rival of today, Fischl. I'm going to be comparing Electro MC with Fischl a lot today. Fischl is a very unique character as her elemental burst is just recasting her elemental skill. Because of this, she can keep up in terms of energy supply and is comparable to Electro MC. Here I'm going to show you a calculation of how much energy both Electro MC and Fischl supplies to the team. For the first two rows here, I'm showing how much particles and energy each character generates. Main character generates 1 electro particle and 3.5 energy, multiplied by the 3 amulets adding up to a total of 10.5 energy. Her burst doesn't generate any particles but only 12 energy. Fischl's elemental skill and burst is identical and is able to generate 6 electro particles each. The next column here is how much energy each character actually gets. Assuming I'm using Eula, a non-electro character, I'm only getting 1 times multiplier from the electro particle. This 1.4 times bonus is the passive from Electro MC. This indicates 40% energy recharge bonus Eula will be getting from picking up the amulets. I'm also assuming this 40% energy recharge is active throughout the Electro main character's elemental burst duration, which actually isn't. The energy recharge bonus lasts for 6 seconds, while her burst lasts for 12 seconds. I'm just being slightly generous for Electro MC here. Next, we look at how much energy Fischl generates for Eula. Well, not much because Eula is a cryo character. She only gets 1 times multiplier from the Electro particles. If we just look at this info and stop, yes, Electro MC is better than Fischl in terms of energy regeneration. However, this is a team game and there are 3 more characters in your team. This is how much energy Electro MC generates for the team and it sucks really bad. Let's start with how much energy Electro MC generates for herself. Because she is off-field and an Electro character, she gains 1.8 times multiplier from the Electro particles. However, for the team members 3 and 4 who aren't Electro, they only gain 0.6 energy. Fischl on the other hand generates 6 particles which also gets a 1.8 times multiplier on an Electro character. The rest of the team also benefits from this, however it only has a 0.6 times multiplier which adds up to a total of 6.8 energy each. 
the same can be repeated with her elemental burst. In terms of total energy gain for your team, Fischl is still better. Supplying energy to your sub DPS is kind of important because you don't want to spend 20 seconds swapping to Burnett and trying to get his elemental burst. This passive energy is often the only way your sub DPS or healer is going to get their energy back. In terms of DPS performance, you also always want to use Burnett or Kazuha with your main DPS elemental burst in sync. Using multiple elemental bursts back to back is a very big part of how a strong Genshin team functions. The problem with Electro MC is that the entire team suffers, including Electro MC herself who has an 80 energy cost. At first glance, you will see most content creators having a dopamine rush when they see their main character regain their burst faster, but you don't see all the three characters suffering. Unless you're a new player that only has your main DPS build, you most likely want all your supports to spam their elemental burst too. It is understandable for new players to only have one main DPS and only want to regain the character's burst, but if you are above AR50, you most likely are looking for combined team DPS. I'm going to give you an example. If Mihoyo deleted all your artifacts and gave you 10,000 resin, will you spend all 10,000 on just one character or will you divide 4,000 resin on your main character and 2,000 on each sub DPS to min max everyone? This is something to consider. This problem becomes even worse if you're using an Electro main DPS. Currently in game, Beidou is an Electro character who has 80 energy costs. However, soon Raiden Shogun and Kujo Sara are also characters who have 80 energy costs. Fischl is going to be able to generate a lot more energy for these three characters because they are going to benefit from the 3 times multiplier of Electro particles. Yes, I'm aware Raiden Shogun has a passive that benefits from energy recharge and Electro MC can transfer energy recharge, but ultimately this doesn't solve the problem of the lack of energy for the team. So this is my first problem with Electro MC, the lack of energy to the team. The second problem is, if her energy regeneration can outperform a good battery. Currently the two most popular teams with Electro MC are Yula and Xiao. However, Xiao already has Sucrose, while Yula already has Diona. So let's compare them side by side. Let's start with Xiao. I'm going to assume Electro MC has a sacrificial sword, so her elemental skill doubles. However, Xiao is very inefficient with Electro Traveler's elemental burst. The energy can only be obtained if you do normal or charge attacks and doesn't apply to plunge attacks. For this reason, I'm not going to include her elemental burst. Sucrose on the other hand generates 4 Animal Particles, which translates to 12 energy when picked up by Xiao. With Sacrificial Book and Constellation 1, Sucrose can generate 36 energy for Xiao, more than what Electro MC can. This is not even taking into account Animal Resonance, Sucrose Crowd Control Ability, and energy generated for the team. With everything considered, Sucrose is a clear winner. How about Yula? Let's take a look. For Yula's case, Yula is actually able to benefit from Traveler's Elemental Burst because you will need to do normal attacks. Yula also benefits from Superconduct because she is a physical main DPS. As for Diona with Sacrificial Bow, she is able to generate 24 energy for Yula, which is less than Electro MC. Diona also provides Shield, Healing and Cryo Resonance, something to consider. Unlike Xiao's case, I think Electro MC is more well-rounded for Yula. Anyway, this sums up my second problem with the Electro MC. Depending on your main DPS, Electro MC does not always outperform a good battery. Plus, the battery also often offers a good party resonance effect. For animal batteries, we have Sucrose. For cryo batteries, we have Diona. For pyro batteries, we have Burnett. Now we move on to the third and final problem. Her damage is just so miserable. I hear many people say she's like Electro Seng Chiu, but she's far from that. If she had better damage stats, I would probably be less critical. Again, I'm going to compare her side by side with Fischl and even Beidou. For this showcase, my Electro Traveler is not using Energy Recharge set. I'm going full DPS mode just to prove a point that her damage sucks even with full gear. I know, the main reason why you run Electro MC is because you want the energy. But if you can kill the enemy in one DPS window, you don't need to run around trying to regain your burst. Another reason why higher DPS is more important is because you can gain energy passively when you reduce the enemy's HP to a certain threshold or killing an enemy. I hope everyone doesn't get too distracted by all the new energy gain mechanics from the new craftables and Electro MC when they can just kill the enemy with a traditional team. DPS is always king. Anyway, those are the 3 problems I have with Electro MC. 
I don't always bash on characters, but I really think people need to consider these things when forming a team. So as promised, here are the teams I think she performs well in. The first team as I said earlier is a Eula team. Eula can benefit from Superconduct as well as her elemental burst that requires the main DPS to do normal and charge attacks. When her burst is off cooldown, she often needs to build up Grim Hub stacks and this is when you can swap in and out with Electro Traveler to pick up the amulets. I would suggest only using Electro Traveler's burst before Eula's burst. This way you can start gaining the energy for the next elemental burst even before the Starfell Sword activates. The second team I think can work well with Electro MC are people who do not have Sacrificial Sword on Sing Chiu. Sing Chiu without Sacrificial Sword really suffers to regain his elemental burst, and to be honest, there aren't any good hydro batteries in the game, besides Sing Chiu himself. There are also people who play Sing Chiu as a main DPS and uses Jade Cutter or Miss Splitter on him. This can turn out to be a quite good combination, as Sing Chiu can deal serious damage with his elemental skill and burst. In addition to that, Electro Charge reactions aren't as weak as they used to be. As for the final team, it is basically any main DPS that lacks a good battery. Example is if Xiao doesn't have Sucrose, Venti or Jin, then Electro Traveler can step in. Or if you play main DPS Noel with Albedo for Geo Resonance and you do not have any artifacts for Geo Traveler. For this case, using Electro Traveler may be viable. If you ask me what about Electro DPS such as Razor or Beidou, I would still recommend using Fischl. Fischl is a far better battery for Electro DPS as compared to Electro MC that just gives energy. On top of that, she has a much better DPS output. The only exception maybe is Raiden Shogun. To be honest, I can't even say for sure because she isn't released yet. Raiden Shogun has a passive that scales with energy recharge and that is probably a good reason to use Electro MC. Anyway, this is my analysis on the Electro Traveler. I probably will come up with a guide really soon, but I'm still playing around with her. I do think running Electro Goblet and a Crit Circler is a waste on her since her damage is so low. I have been testing on an Elemental Mastery build for Electro MC. Let me know what you guys think about Electro MC. I know I may be harsh but she's a free character so that's always better than nothing. I just thought I should voice these issues that I face with her. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.